You may recall about three weeks ago, maybe Marvel Comics and Jason Aaron got in a little bit of trouble when there was a character in King Conan number three that, while they didn't look like Pocahontas, they had a name that was obscurely associated with, with the real-life person of Pocahontas. They got in a lot of hot water. They got in trouble. Jason Aaron had to bend the knee. He begged for forgiveness. He even gave his money away. And now we are seeing the fruits of that labor from the Twitter mob going after Marvel and, and Jason Aaron, knowing he didn't have a spide. And we are getting the changes to the art. At least we have seen the art change for issue number two, which had the big cliffhanger that first shows the character. She looks pretty ridiculous now. And I'm going to bring my good friend, Aaron Sparrow. He's a writer on season four of Young Justice. He's the man behind Darkwing Duck Comics. He was also the creative director for Boom's Boom Kids line when they had the Disney license. Got a lot of experience in comic books. So I'm going to bring Aaron on here. We're going to have a good conversation about this and what Jason Aaron and Marvel Comics have done to incentivize people to attack them further. I think you you know about this where Jason Aaron essentially had to go out there and apologize, even though it's clear that he was not trying to portray this character as Pocahontas. He accidentally used a obscure name that is associated with Pocahontas. But when you look at the character's outfit, the way that they're portrayed, it was clear that they're from like Aztec or Mayan uh, civilization. They certainly weren't from from like Jamestown kind of area where you would have had Pocahontas and her tribe. But he had to apologize anyway, and they've adjusted the art. This thing absolutely looks ridiculous. I think it's a travesty that they would they would change Mahmoud Osrar's art, which looks so great to begin with. But now it looks like this character is wearing essentially, I, I guess, a potato sack with the best way to describe it would be brooms on either side of her head. Well, you know, Jason Aaron didn't have to apologize. He chose to apologize. You know, one uh, one attention seeking lunatic on Twitter has a problem with something. And, uh, you know, you have to make the choice as to whether or not to uh, to kowtow to them. And, uh, you know, he did because, you know, Jason Aaron is uh, at his heart, uh, you know, I think um, pretty much a coward when it comes to this kind of thing. I, I've got no other way to say it. What he should have done is he should have come back and said, well, that's just coincidental. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read the little indicia at the bottom of a comic book, but any similarities to any person's living or dead is purely coincidental. And that's the case here. So I just I reject your entire premise and um, go piss up a rope. If you don't like it, that should be the response. Uh, but instead, you know, these times we live in uh, and these uh, these writers that are just so terrified, uh, you know, he had to kowtow and he had to give his uh, what, what do you have to give his salary to some charity or something like that for that issue? It's it's completely stupid. And Marvel now has has gone even the extra route and made it even more stupid with this uh, this art change. You feel bad for Mahmoud Osrar that Jason Aaron didn't stand up for him and his art. And then he actually ends up having to change it. These changes are all for the worst. Who put, why would you put a potato sack on the character? Couldn't you do anything interesting? And to just put like these weird brooms on their, on her head, it makes the character look completely ridiculous rather than stand out in the art as somebody that you want to learn about. Why did the art need to change anyway? Was that the problem? Was the problem the art? I thought the problem was the fact that he used a name that was uh, associated with Pocahontas. I believe is the name. It was, it was clear from the the way the character was depicted that they that they weren't associated with Pocahontas. Yeah. So uh, you know, I don't know why the art had to change, except for this uh, this you know march towards Puritanism that we seem to be uh, experiencing in uh, in comics. As far as uh, you can't have anything sexy, and you know, this is why Marvel is a bad uh, company to hold the Conan license. They uh, you know they don't have the balls for a license like Conan. Well, yeah, exactly. You go over to a Blaze and the Sumerian comics they're putting out. They're certainly not for kids, but they absolutely embrace the Robert E. Howard like uh, world where the Hiberian age, where you have Conan and the Sumerians, and you have sexy women, and you have gory fights and crazy monsters and people getting limbs hacked off and stuff. Their version of Conan in the Sumerian books is so much better than Marvel's, and I think it's because they have the freedom to actually express what the the writer. The creator Robert E. Howard wanted to with the character. Yeah, no, exactly. It's uh, you know you've got swords and sorcery and sexy ladies and you know strapping dudes uh, in loincloths. You know that that's the stuff that fires a kid's imagination. <laughs> as far as Marvel's end, this does set a bad precedent, and they've already set a lot of bad precedents about. They will bend the knee to essentially anybody other than their fans. If you don't read Marvel Comics and you have a problem with what we did in a comic book, we will absolutely address what you have to say and we'll even beg for your forgiveness. 
But if you're a Marvel Comics fan, we will ignore anything that you have to say. It just puts their creators and their entire line in a bad spot. And it almost it makes it appear that they thought that what Mahmoud Aswar and Jason Aaron did was wrong to begin with. Yeah, it uh, it sells out. Uh, it sells out your creators. Uh, and, you know, maybe that's maybe I'm being too harsh on Jason Aaron. Uh, you know, maybe he knows the inner workings of Marvel and he saw the writing on the wall. It's like, oh, no, one person complained. So I know what's going to happen. They're going to sell me out. You know, they're going <laughs> to sell me down the river if I don't uh, if I don't come out and apologize. And uh, and so he had to uh, he had to go ahead and take that blow to, to keep working. But, you know, at some point, like at what point do you stand up for your artistic integrity and the artistic integrity of your artist what at what point do you say this is what we this is what we put on the page is what we intended to put on the page i'm sorry you don't like it you don't have to read it you know they're they're really quick to tell people if you don't like it don't read it on the other side of the aisle you know if you have a complaint about what they're doing you know uh their oh, their progressivism or their activism if you have a problem with that you know if you don't like it don't read it but if you're one person you know, out there complaining on Twitter that uh, you didn't like this depiction of this character, then we have to, you know, completely change everything and, uh, you know, bend the knee and, and bow down and, and beg for your forgiveness. And just, you know, basically uh, it's, it's really, uh, it, what a, what a terrible time to, to be a comics fan. This might be the worst time of all times. I would go back to the, to the Wortham era where we had the, the destruction of the innocent and all that kind of stuff before I'd want to be right here right now with Marvel and DC the way they are. But this is an, another issue that Marvel and DC have is we're moving towards the digital age. People need to start accepting digital comics in that platform for Marvel and, and DC to be able to kind of grow their line and, and get people used to this new format. This is just another reason why people should never buy digital comics. They'll just go and change them on you. Yeah, no, they'll go back and they'll change your collection and anything that uh, they find problematic in 10 years that was written today, they'll go back and change it. So, you know, your book will never be the thing that you, you know, and, this is, and you, we see this happening with, with movies and things like that, too. You know, it's, if you own a copy of Toy Story 2, they had to go and they had to take out the uh, the part where, you know, in the little outtakes at the end where uh, Stinky Pete is uh, interviewing the Barbies you know, because, you know, you know, in this Weinstein era, we can't have this joke. We can't joke about this. And, uh, you know, they took it out of all the digital copies. So this is why it's really important to own physical media and to not invest in their, uh, you know, they, they, want, they want to move you to digital. It's more beneficial for them. But, uh, you know, for you who respects the, uh, the artistic endeavors of the, you know, creators as they intended it to be, uh, it doesn't, uh, it, it's not good for you. And you should, uh, you know, that's why I avoid it. You know, obviously you've worked at the Boom Kids line. You were in charge of all the Disney stuff. You worked, worked at Tokyo Pop. Now you're working on some other uh, projects. As somebody that's been inside the industry, that's been essentially a creative director on a major line of comic books, where does it end? Does it end? Does it only get worse? Is, is there a moment where we come to this realization that all of this is a waste of time and stupid? I hope so. I hope that we, you know, there, there has to be a point where you have to say, you know what? We need to stop catering to the mentally ill on Twitter. They are never going to be happy. They are never going to be satisfied. No matter what con concessions you make to them uh, and give them what they want, they're always going to demand more. And you're, they don't buy it. They don't spend money on it. They're not an audience. They're just people who have nothing better to do in their lives than to find things to complain about and to look for people to destroy because they are empty inside. They have nothing going on. And they've controlled the conversation for far too long and it's time to just stop telling people or start telling people on Twitter. Well, you know, uh, that's, that's our story. You know, that's, that's what we made, you know, live with it. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon. And I don't know. It, it, there's a problem with DC and Marvel right now. I don't think there's a lot of really cool stories coming out. I think this might play a big part of it. I think that, you know, being a part of that corporate structure, they might be just creating scare. You don't want to upset somebody. Did we have a sensitivity writer on this? What could this potentially mean, you know, to, to one individual out there that could eventually, you know, could potentially, you know, harm them, you know, or, or they can claim harm kind of thing. Well, the big problem is when the argument became uh, that impact was more important than intent. Uh, that's, you know, pretty much where now you can't do anything. You can't do anything creatively because it might, it might upset a single person, you know, a single person out there might get upset and we can't have that, you know? So we need to just make these things as dull and as bland and, and just as uninteresting un un as possible so that no one could ever possibly be offended. You know, when this whole story broke, I, I thought to myself, did Jason Aaron do this intentionally? Absolutely not. 
you know, I can't imagine a world where he would, you know? Uh, and so that to me, it just, it was just a coincidence, you know, let it go. Just chalk it up to coincidence. Say, Oh, Hey, you know what? You're right. What a, what a, what a crazy random happenstance. Sorry. You didn't, you know, sorry. You didn't like it, but that's our story. And you move on, you know, you need to tell these people no. And you find that when you find that when corporations do stand up and they tell the Twitter audience, no, you know, we're not going to do anything about this. They rage for a couple of days and then they just move on to the next thing that they can complain about, you know, because if you don't budge, then they give up. They give up and they move on to the next easy target, which unfortunately is quite often is Marvel or DC. Yeah, they're looking for will- willing victims of, of this weird, uh, I don't know, cultural blackmail kind of stuff that they do to people. I don't know. I imagine in five years, uh, Aaron Sparrow, every character in the Marvel Comics universe will be wearing a potato sack and a broom for a hat. And, you know, it'll offend nobody ever again. I'll definitely let you have the last word on this one. It's just so stupid, and all the changes are for the worst, in my opinion. No, they absolutely are. And this is why, you know, if you're tired of this, if you're tired of this corporate thinking, if you're tired of this these agenda-driven comics, you know, go out and, and support independent comics. There's so many people out there doing cool, you know, throwback comics. It's, it's weird to say, you know, throwback comics when you mean just comics that were quality and told good adventure stories with uh you know with heroism and and action but uh but yeah those are those are throwbacks now in this era that we live in and there's so many independent people out there doing it you know go and support them with your dollars stop giving your money to these corporations and these idiots that are just you know these these they've just been infested with activists who don't know anything about story don't know anything about character all they know is agenda get get away from it you know go find yourself uh you know things that you enjoy stop spending money on these things and don't buy digital. If you weren't here for the origins of where this story came from and how Jason Aaron, I guess, got in trouble and why he apologized and what it was all about, I do have this video here talking about that kind of in full, about the allegations, the complaint that was made, and obviously it ended up with some really terrible art where they destroyed Mahmoud Ostrar's art. I think that's terrible. But definitely check this out if you aren't fully aware of what happened. 